everyone. Um, like I promised, I'm going to show you how to make um, this expandable photo keepsake box. And um, this one's bricks, so now I'm going to work on Blake's. And make sure you listen very carefully to the instructions that I give you because they're very important. And pause the frame if you need to. And this may take, um, this may last for two videos, I'm not sure. So here's the paper and the chipboard that you're, not gonna, that you're gonna need to cut first. You're gonna need to cut your chipboard first and you're gonna need to, you're gonna need to cut, I'm sorry, let me take the gum out of my mouth. You're gonna need to cut one at seven and a half inches by three and a half inches. The second one is gonna be seven and a half by four and a half inches. Third one is gonna be seven and a half by five and a half inches. And then another seven and a half by four and a half and then another seven and a half by four and a half. Um, and this is the order that it's going to go to. I number mine one through five so I know exactly how I'm going to lay it out. Now you're going to separate them about, I would say, a quarter of an inch apart. And you can guesstimate on this. It's not going to be, um, it's not going to affect the project too much if you're slightly off. And Brooke and Blake are co-hosting with me today, so that's who you'll be hearing in the background. Now you're going to need um, some scotch tape or masking tape and you're going to need long pieces because you're going to want to hold these together. So stick two, pa two pieces all the way down so you can keep them the same distance apart. Just like that. And I'm telling you to do it this way because we're going to be using spray glue. And this um, regular old scotch tape works perfect because it easily comes off. And even if it doesn't come off very easily and you rip up some of this chipboard, it's not going to matter because it's going to be covered with uh, cardstock anyway. Make sure you do, so set that aside after you've done that, set it aside. Make sure you do this project with cardstock because you want this paper to be fairly thick. Now, the next um, cuts you need to make are as follows. These next two cuts are going to be the outside of your box. So, these are the two that I chose for the outside. And what these cuts need to be is um, the top of your box, which is going to be this area that shows. Um, is going to need to be eight and a half by 12 inches and then the bottom half of your box which is this part is going to be eight and a half by 12 inches as well so I chose this for my top and this for my bottom now what you want to do is butt those right up to each other and if there's text make sure that the text isn't going to be upside down so see this one I need to flip over so I want the writing to be right side up whenever I on the front of the box. So take that together with some dry adhesive, double sided dry adhesive. And I went way off on that, so let me grab my scissors. Should have had these strips pre-cut, but uh, what can you do? I was in a hurry, and I really wanted to do this tutorial for you guys. So now, tear that off. And... Grab a box because this is the gooey part. Can I take this, sweetie? Brooke was playing with my box. So grab a box, just like that, and stick that paper in there. And the dry adhesive, the spray adhesive that I'm using is um, this Elmer's spray adhesive. And this is the best one to use because it's still a little fumey like um, the industrial kind, but it is a lot, it sprays really well and it's a lot thinner when it sprays. So make sure you spray your paper really well and you want to make sure you're shaking up your bottle as often as you can. Don't get too close, you want to get about six inches away from your 
project. You can get a little closer, but um, not too close. So make sure you spray that really well. And I'm just going to get the top of these edges because the edges are the most important. All right. So you don't have to work too fast with this because I'm going to show you the right way to use spray adhesive. Um, so you just spray this. Don't worry if it dries. Just set it aside for a second. And then go and grab your chipboard that you just laid out with the scotch tape. And do the same thing. Stick it in there in your box and spray it really well. Shake your bottle up every time you use it. And I know what you're thinking. Why am I spraying this again when I already sprayed that paper? You're spraying this again because the spray adhesive dries really fast, but it, even if it's the adhesive is dry, it will still stick to each other if you spray both pieces. And it will, it'll still be permanent, so that's why I'm doing that. And this is still pretty tacky, but it is pretty dry as well. Um, so now I just sprayed the back of my pieces of chipboard and I'm just going to set it on here and this is going to bond it permanently. So make sure once you set it down that you've got it where you want it because once you set it down it's over. Alright, so press firmly. And now you can pull off your scotch tape. Stuff is really sticky. Oh, get off! And when you're pulling off, if you go like this as you're pulling, it won't peel up too much of your chipboard. Okay, now what you need to do is spray this all again. Um, so grab your box again. Where'd my box go? Shake it up and spray mainly the edges for right now. Actually, go ahead and spray the center too because right now, because we're going to cover that later anyway. So spray the edges. And one of these bottles goes a really long way. And just a tip, after you, every time you use it after you're done, turn it upside down and give it a little squirt and that'll unclog your tip. All right, so I've got that completely sprayed. Now you're gonna make your next cut with papers, but you should really pre-cut these before you even start the project. You're gonna need one cut at 11 and a half by seven and a quarter, and this one is gonna go on the bottom, and your next cut is gonna be cut at 11 and a quarter and seven and a quarter, and that's gonna be the top. So now what you wanna do is you want to fold over these edges. So just kind of train it. Normally you would, I would score along the chipboard before I do this, but for time's sake I'm just doing it this way. And actually, I totally forgot one step. Make sure you miter your corners. Just cut them just like this. Just cut them like that. All right. Okay, now you're gonna fold it over. And start in the middle and work your way out. See how well this is sticking to it? The glue is sticking? Because there's glue on both pieces, the chipboard and the cardstock. So it works really well. Next, what you'll wanna do is just burnish your edges. This will give your box a nice, sharp, manufactured look. And then just finish folding over all your edges. And I'm touching this, but the glue's not coming off of my fingers because spray this spray glue is awesome. All right, turn it over. It's okay that that ripped a little bit because it's not really gonna show. Actually, that was where the center was, so it doesn't matter, or where the seam is. Okay, 
So now I'm just going back over with my bone fold, burnishing the edges here.